thank you very much. Uh, hello and good morning to all the participants in the event. It's my honor and pleasure to share with you uh, during the following minutes my vision and also a number of examples from the European Network of Living Labs and all. Uh, with regards to the sustainable and smart city, I advance that I will pay particular attention to the citizen engagement processes as well. First of all, uh, kind of let me start with a short introduction of myself. I work in this building, the Computer Vision Center, a building hosting 130 people devoted to research and technology transfer in, techno in computer vision. The branch of artificial intelligence dealing with images and video. We have now 50 PhD theses ongoing and we work with the main leading stakeholder worldwide in autonomous driving, medical imaging, object recognition, biometrics, face detection, and recognition as well, etc. In summary, in this building, we teach computers how to see as humans see. But beyond successful competitive projects in research and capacity building, we also have a strong source of revenue in private companies and have an intense approach uh, to technology transfer. As associate director of the Computer Vision Center, I participate in the definition of the Computer Vision Alliance in Catalonia, our ecosystem of computer vision stakeholders. This is relevant since computer vision is the tip of the arrow of the artificial intelligence industry in Catalonia, Spain. And it is the field with the largest economical growth in the added value so far. We are using computer vision as the starting point for the development of our regional strategy for artificial intelligence. In addition, Barcelona has been appointed by the Spanish government as reference city for the Spanish national strategy as well. Finally, I'm the founder of the, let us say, a life project, the Library Living Lab a space in a public library in the metropolitan area of Barcelona, where to explore how technology transforms the cultural experience of people. It could look now that this profile is leading to a technological approach to innovation processes, though this is not fully correct. The transformation is societal. An example of this is that the library living lab has led to the creation of the BiblioLab program, a network of experimentation spaces, more than 230, that transforms the actual role of the public space in a place for knowledge sharing and experimentation. In other words, the Library Living Lab has made possible a transition of more than 230 public libraries in the public in the province of Barcelona from repositories of books into places for open innovation to happen through citizen engagement. I will have a few more words about this project later on. During the last years, I had the pleasure and honor of being the elected president of the European Network of Living Labs, ENOL. My organization aims at supporting our members and all the living labs in the world for the development of citizen-centric multi-stakeholder innovation initiatives. We facilitate knowledge exchange, capacity building actions, and joint action project partnerships. And we actively work towards influencing UE policies, promoting our labeled living labs and all the living labs. The annual labeling process is a certification of the maturity of a living lab initiative, and it has maximum quality standards. Historically, more than 470 living labs have obtained the annual label. As you can see in the map, uh, we have different living labs members of ENOL in Asia too. I'm happy to say as well that recently, a number of living labs from Korea have participated in the labeling process as well. And we are looking forward to have more uh, in all Korean uh, living labs, also from Seyung. The picture shows a global phenomenon and we are proud to be able to participate 
as a relevant reference point. We have intense collaboration, as I said, with the Korean ecosystem, and I have had the opportunity to engage with different actors through my role in ENOL. ENOL has currently three relevant Korean legal labs as members of the network, Busan Network of Legal Labs, born in the context of IoT in Busan City, Daegu Creativity City Forum Legal Lab, and Smart Safety Legal Lab in Ansan and Hwasong. And all has signed a memorandum of understanding with CLIT, the Korean Local Information Research and Development Institute, and a Wigo Institution, a network of cities for a government with relevant leading role from Seoul. Finally, I also had the pleasure to collaborate with the following institutions in different events uh, and actions in Korea, the Busan IT Industry Promotion Agency, the Busan Center for Creative Economy and Innovation, and our colleagues and friends from the Korean branch of the Friedrich Neumann Foundation for Freedom, who develop active fostering of the Level Lab model together with Korean partners. This led to a number of initiatives for exchange of the European and Korean visions for the smart city processes, particularly centric centered in citizen engagement components in innovation actions. Living labs are about innovation. Open innovation ecosystems and the vision that we promote in Enon is centered in the engagement of the citizens as actors and not factors of the transformations to happen during the digital transformation. The multi-stakeholder approach implies development of the four elects, academia, government, industry, and citizens. There is also a component of sustainability of development in the territory. And for that reason, I usually mention the multiple elects approach. These building blocks allow for a number of common features that are shared by all in the labs. First, a real life setting, a hospital, a public library, a road, accessible to users, and not just a lab within a company or within the university walls. Second, active user involvement, which is key for the actual development of real life settings. Next, multi-stakeholder participation, meaning the integration or the four Alex within the innovation process. Implicit to the former is a multi-method approach, which allows for cross fertilization this features implies the need of a co-creation process as well with distributed responsibilities among all the stakeholders. And finally, a needed component of orchestration. Certainly, all these features will have different uh, weighting depending on the typology of the project and eventually a stronger focus in one or several dimensions. But the general structure described is valid as a first approach to Lehman Labs, as we understand them. I will have the chance to provide you with several concrete examples. But the context of this approach is provided by the digital transformation. The digital transformation is not only a new industrial transformation, it's an actual human transformation. The connectivity that the internet provides with allows for potential access to all the available human knowledge for all the people. In the years to come, the borders between the institutions will blur New jobs will appear, other will disappear, and this will take place at a pace never seen before. This requires an agile response from the institutions. In our last open legal lab days in Geneva, the Undersecretary General of United Nations, Michael Murray, shared that the challenges that we are facing cannot be tackled by one institution alone, and I cannot agree more. And it is here in the multi-stakeholder approach of the legal labs that we have to focus making sense from user-centric perspective, from a citizen-centric perspective, from a human perspective. The corollary is that now innovation and social transformation are happening hand in hand. In Enel, we have developed five action-oriented task forces to, lead, to be led by our effective members and open to externals to focus on actual challenges from an action perspective. Using our legal labs as an already existing infrastructure for innovation, these action-oriented task forces are social innovation and digital rights, social impact of artificial intelligence, health and well-being, energy and environment on rural legal labs. 
In the further slides, I will explain how these five dimensions can be deployed in the context of Jashmar City, but paying particular attention to the citizen engagement component. The action-oriented task force on social innovation and digital rights is focused on facilitating the collaboration of all these innovative networks addressing social issues, housing, health, skills, education, at the grassroots level, territory by territory, generating synergies from the local to the European and global level. For instance, colleagues in Bristol, UK, are leading the development of innovation actions in the field of affordable housing. This has a profound digital dimension since all our data are now part of our identity. And for that reason, the Lab for Digital Citizenship in Barcelona is developing a chart for digital rights. Our colleagues in Basque Country and Greece are using gamification for addressing such problems too. The opportunity here is to understand social innovation as a city task and living labs as the tools for its explicit development. One example of living lab in this context is the collaboratory in Catalonia, South Spain. This is aiming at designing a layer of social technologies. This is complementing the hard technologies, 5G, IoT, AI, and in this case, these social technologies are based on living lab methods and tools, allowing for the interconnection of the different labs of the territory around one specific challenge. The territory, both public administration and academia, citizens and companies, contribute to a common challenge as a distributed infrastructure for social innovation. In this particular case, the social challenge is the transformation of the socioeconomic tissue in the context of the new green hydrogen source of energy. We see here that there is an element of transversality in the different task forces, for instance, linking social innovation with energy and environment. But the key here is that the innovation process proposed affects all the ecosystem and its systemic social transformation, not only new industrial developments. AI is everywhere in our lives, but strong concerns exist regarding appropriate use of it. We need regulatory sandboxes, sandboxes to understand not only how to produce and use AI, but also its impact in job profiles, education, economy, mobility, etc. Two hubs in Brussels and Taiwan and a network of libraries in Barcelona are working in the definition of trustworthy AI using their living labs as testing facilities. The citizens will have the possibility to participate in the debate and the decisions, decision making of the technologies to be developed. In the Smart City Expo last 2019, this task force moderated a panel which type of AI we want for our cities. In the context of this annual action-oriented task force, our colleagues in Epica Lab in Barcelona, Badalona, Spain, are using performing arts as a very original way of approaching these new technologies to the citizens by engaging them in actual issues that AI puts on the table. Our colleagues in Thessaloniki, Greece, are the leaders of the working group in mobility in which they are deploying in the city the new tools for the autonomous car. This will represent an enormous change in the type of mobility that we will enjoy in our cities and will affect all the citizens from the minute zero. Finally, another example of the mentioned systemic transformation can be related to the library living lab in Barcelona, Spain, which has explored how technology transforms the cultural experience of people. As I mentioned, it has contributed to the transformation of more than 230 public libraries in the Barcelona region by changing the role of the public space from a repository of books to a place for people to gather and exchange their knowledge, developing innovation actions with the new demonstrators obtained from the research centers and become scientists to projects of citizen science. 
citizen science appears itself as an excellent vehicle for citizen engagement in research and innovation actions. Particularly during this last year, we felt the dramatic relevance of the need for a resilient society in terms of health and well being. The main idea is to go from patient to protagonist. The future universal health systems will not be only for the treatment of illnesses, but for the development of healthy life and to support our well being. This is the key element for the sustainability of the business models as well. The role of patient and their families will be most relevant since the co-creation of these new universal health systems implies the redefinition of the roles and the assumption of responsibilities. The horizon of the silver economy provides a basis for the global transformation of our system. As an example, I will show four completely different approaches of living labs in the national context of Spain. Healthcare Living Lab Catalonia approaches the health systems as a place allowing startups to develop their new products and services and using the hospital premises as a place for these innovations to be tested and deployed. Lab Saudi Living Lab in Galicia my hometown, my home region, promoted by the Regional Health Service, explores the use of private public procurement tools, in which both the public administration and SMEs take the risk for developing innovative solutions for citizens. This is an open innovation environment where the citizen-centric perspective is taken into the consideration for the public administration innovation. It is a Casha Living Lab developed a project in North Barcelona in order to support all the dimension of AIDS patients, including their social inclusion, their specific needs for well being, with a strong component of evidence based decisions provided thanks to the collaboration with universities and research centers. Research appears here as the seed for impactful innovation. Finally, Alacen in Pamplona co-creates together with the families of the patients with brain damage novel solutions that are not only limited to the therapy, but also to all the aspects of their day-by-day -day life. This is integrated in the by the government as a relevant source of evidence for the adaptation of routes, services, processes, etc. These four examples show the dramatic adaptability of the living lab approach, focusing on different dimensions, depending on the main aims of the stakeholders. Our cities cannot be understood without the rural component, the necessary component for the natural sustainability and simply one of the main resources and sources for food. We are currently working from two different perspectives, the digital capacity building for citizens of rural areas and the use of the living lab approach for the agri-food life cycle. Our colleagues in Andalusia, Spain, have transformed the, their network of internet access points into a public infrastructure of connected buildings where the citizens of rural areas can go to develop their digital capacities through formal and non-formal training. They also transform the role of economic dynamization agent into the role of regional innovation agent, helping the citizens in the development of innovation actions and facilitating the access for innovation related public grants. The result is a connected ecosystem of rural areas addressing common innovation challenges. On the other hand, our colleagues of Serbia 
have been working in the concept of precision agriculture. And all is now leaving the task within the project already that is helping the European Commission to conceptualize how living labs can provide a significant quantitative leap in the integration of citizens of rural areas and food producers in the farm to four cycle and to define how pilots can be designed and deployed in rural areas. Last but not least, smart cities must have a pillar for energy, understanding all the dimensions of energy generation and consumption. Energy and environment are profoundly linked to each other. Our colleagues in Switzerland are developing a program in which living labs are used to co-create the new habits. New habits for energy consumption, developing services that are suited for that. Innovate for Cities is a city-focused research and innovation initiative that addresses critical data, innovation, and technological gaps to enable cities to take accelerator and more ambitious climate actions. This is co-developed by cities, city networks, scientists and research institutions, and leading private sector entities. The initiative focuses on the areas most critical to drive climate action in cities. One of the challenges that we are facing ahead is the proper training in order to facilitate these behavioral changes. For this reason, ANOL has been developing its learning lab during the past years, and we are extending the program throughout all the year so that the community members and externals can be helped to increase the learning curve only the lab methods and tools. This behavioral change can only be achieved through a proper consolidation of the competences needed. And I insist in this emphasis, we need the capacity building development in order to apply these methods and tools already explained. Our cities will have to have a strong invest in capacity building since all the methods and tools needed for these cooperative efforts to arrive to a successful goal have to be developed by the community leaders with the right skills, promoters and worthy of trust with the right understanding of governance models and the business models required. New governance models and new business models required. In Enol, we are humbly contributing to this through our capacity building program, in which it is its members, the members of the, of the legal lab community who are sharing their experience with the new living labs, academics and public institutions. Capacity building is the only way forward in order to create innovation-led growth and positive social transformation. If you are willing to know uh, more about Living Labs, I invite you to visit the ENOL website. We have gathered a comprehensive collection of learning materials and tools, research papers and project portfolio. Please have a look if you are interested in that. And in addition to it, as a reference point, every year we are having our digital living lab days, the gathering occasion for all our community and all the externals, our conference. I warmly 
invite you to attend to the digital Level Up Days, which will take place during the second week of September of 2021. You are very much welcome. All the aforementioned vision is compiled in a collection, in a collective creation, together with other institutions, which is our Manifesto for Innovation in Europe. You can access to that also through our website. I invite you to visit, uh, to visit it, um, and uh, we wanted to have it a live document, as we have a live community for living labs. Consolidating strong views and suggestions for actions, but also with flexibility and dynamically adaptation to the transformations that come in our society. Please feel free to join us and to contact us if you really wanted to know more about the examples of the European network of living labs. And do not hesitate to send us any comment or questions. Thank you very much.